Don't know if you have any thoughts about the Nittany Lions performance uh, against Minnesota. I think Minnesota, to me, I watched every play of the game. Uh, it turned out to be a much better and more explosive and dynamic team. And I knew statistically that they were, but I got to actually see it against a quality opponent. Right. Uh, maybe Penn State's not as good as we thought. I, I still think they're a very good football team. But maybe Ohio State is, uh, based on what we're now seeing with, with um, of course, Michigan State. Their their issues are are way beyond what I expected uh, in blowing a twenty five point lead in the fourth quarter to Illinois. But uh, Penn State, um, yeah, just your thoughts about um, them competing with Ohio State in a couple of weeks, and obviously we will fully preview the game with you next week. I think. That game is going to be rather interesting. It's it's going to have a similar vibe to to the Wisconsin game. Still a big game, but not a team that's coming into Ohio Stadium undefeated. Penn State got exposed. I mean, I think that's just being frank about what happened. I think the cornerbacks, which which were a problem for Penn State throughout the season and had had some issues, but it just hadn't cost their team, um, were really exposed in this game. You know, Minnesota has big you know, talented wide receivers, but I don't think anyone thought they were that talented, but they just, I mean, from, from everything I saw in the game and I didn't watch every single on the press night, you know, they were just able to, to move the ball through the air. There were a number of third downs where Penn state just couldn't get off the field. And I think that's, that's an issue for Penn state, especially when you project forward to two weeks from now against an Ohio state offense that hasn't been slowed down, slowed down at all, all year. Year, um, and certainly has wide receivers that should be able to do some damage against these cornerbacks. Um, you know, so so it'll be interesting. My my big thing is how does Penn State respond? You know, coming off a loss, you can go one of two ways. Frankly, you know, you can either regroup and you know build and, and try and come back into Columbus in a couple weeks and, and earn an, what will be certainly be an upset win at that point, or you let your season you know kind of fall apart because. You know, it, it didn't go your way, and, and now you have a loss, and, and maybe dreams of a college football playoff are quite a bit further away than they were. Um, you know, it'll it'll tell us a lot about not only Penn State, but but James Franklin um, as a coach, and, and just how they how they respond. You know, Penn State's been been through this before, but that was a different group of players. Um, you know, wh where's the leadership of this team, and and just like I said, how do they respond? Uh, I I still think this is going to be a very good game in a couple weeks. I'm excited for it. Um, I know. That'll take some of the luster off, and, and people will argue that, that maybe it being at noon instead of a night game like you usually get between Ohio State and Penn State makes it a little less exciting. But I'm excited for that game in two weeks, certainly more so than I am for Ohio State Rutgers, which, as you put it, um, Ohio State should be able to score as many points as they want and, and could play all of their backups and maybe still have the same result. Yeah, so James Franklin, I don't think there's any question that he took over for Bill Bryan, O'Brien, who did a remarkable job in just navigating the situation and bringing them through uh, the debacle that they found themselves in from a program standpoint and, and maintaining stability and credibility at that point. And Franklin takes over and, uh, you know, it didn't go well his first few seasons. They had the breakthrough in 2016. So give him a ton of credit for elevating the recruiting to a certain level that's near elite uh but he just hasn't pushed it past that and continues to win the, uh, lose the two or three games per year that puts them in the top 10 to 15 range but they have yet to show and it doesn't appear as there though they're going to show to be elite again this year another really good football team but that is going to be a step back from from the elite status in college football and and that's about where they've been for three or four years yeah, I, I, I think the biggest issue with, with James Franklin has been that winning the biggest games, um, you know, you mentioned the, the, the win over Ohio State a few years on the blocked field goal, um, but you know, he, does, he just doesn't have a ton more. He did win a Big Ten championship, um, played in the Rose Bowl, but they lost that to USC, and, and we're often over the hump in those big games, and, and that. Um, and, you know, whether that comes down to his coaching or, like you said, not having quite the, the number of players, then, you know, it, it is up for debate. Um, obviously, he's being mentioned as, as possible head coaching candidates at other major programs. So people out there see something like with James, and, you know, as you mentioned, that the fact that he's been able to turn this Penn State program back into a perennial top 10 team is, is definitely impressive. Um, you know, I didn't think this team... You know, you lose a guy like Trace McSorley two years ago. You you lost Saquon Barkley. Um, you know they've they've been able to sustain that level, which is a good thing. But you know, at, from from a Penn State perspective, you want to take it to the next step and and win the Big Ten again, get to the College Football Playoff. They just haven't been able to do that. 
Um, not that this loss to Minnesota completely ruins things. They're still in the running for um, a Big Ten East division title, and that would get them to the Big Ten championship game. Assuming that they reach there, that would mean probably beating Ohio State. And if you have a win over Ohio State, maybe a one-loss Penn State team, Big Ten champion can still make the college football playoff. Um, it would just depend how other things shake out. I do think, you know, we, we should talk a little about Minnesota and what, what they are able to do. You know, now still undefeated. We'll see where the, the college football playoff committee has them ranked. But I believe they were number seven in the AP poll uh, that came out yesterday. So, you know, they've get, still got their toughest games ahead both Iowa and Wisconsin. Um, they got to win one of those, I believe, to get to the Big Ten championship game. But you, if you're an Ohio State fan, you'd love to see an undefeated Minnesota in the Big Ten championship game just, you know, in case you uh, you lose a game for the Big Ten championship game or, you know, you, you lose in the Big Ten championship game. If you lose to an undefeated team, maybe you're still considered for the college football playoff, though losing the conference championship, it would be hard to argue. Um but I do think, you know, it'll be interesting to watch, you know, like I said about Penn State, how they respond. Well, how does Minnesota now respond to, you know, winning that first top top five game and then, you know, being a potential top 10 team? You know, how does P.J. Fleck, who's who's never had a team ranked this high, how does he handle that situation? How do those players who've rarely been in this situation handle it? Um, so, you know, a lot of interesting things, I think, came out of that game as, as we project forward for the rest of the year and how it might shake out. Um, it'll just, it'll be interesting to watch this time of year, November in college football is always fun. You, know, you see the upsets, you see, you know, the big games and, you know, aside from, aside from this Rutgers game that, that we're avoiding talking about too much. Uh, I think, I think we're in for a fun September through it with big 10 football. Yeah. The, November, football, the, uh, the, the power index is still not, uh, respecting Minnesota. I think I saw them in the 35 to 40% range in regards to probability of beating Iowa on the road this week and then Wisconsin in two weeks. So. Uh, there are still going to be the doubters. Yes, it's just one monumental effort, and they should be given credit for it. Um, they've won the games uh, before them, uh, before that standpoint, but uh, we know what the strength of schedule looks like for Minnesota, but they've got it all sitting in front of them. All right, Pat, we appreciate you stopping by to break down uh, Ohio State and uh, maybe not necessarily Rutgers. I will say for some folks out there that uh, if you're a stat geek, uh, and if this game goes as expected, you just want to look at the box score after the game. Uh, I think one of my favorite stats from this college football season, Pat, is that Rutgers in losing to Indiana getting shut out. They completed four passes for one yard. They had one yes. yard passing against Indiana in that game. And, and, and that's just the beginning of it. You can go through the Rutgers box scores uh, from the past few years, and it's just uh, it's been atrocious for a long time. And speaking of Indiana, Penn State's what's that, Pat? That's tough to do. Complete four passes and only it, get one yard out of it. It is difficult to do. It's it's mighty difficult to do. And and speaking of Indiana and Penn State, with the Hoosiers at seven and two, Penn State they can't afford to to look ahead as a two touchdown favorite uh, against the Hoosiers this week. Uh, Indiana certainly uh, is capable. All right, Pat. We appreciate you stopping by to talk Ohio State, and uh, we will catch up with you hopefully next week. Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks for having me.